Hello and welcome back to Dreamloop Podcasts. My name is Matthias and go ahead guys, say your own name, names. My name is Tommy. Uh, hi, my name is Kimmo. And my name is Ville and I'm here too. This time we're going to be talking about our favorite stealth games and uh, favorite stealth mechanics in games overall. And I think uh, I think most of us have, have at least played some games that have uh, stealth mechanics uh, and uh, of course the the very first thing that comes to my mind is the Metal Gear Solid series Yay. and that is that that is that is one of my favorite game series of all time overall but uh, uh, if I may start this whole thing myself uh, I will say that uh, Metal Gear Solid 5 has my favorite uh, sneaking mechanics that I've seen so far. Uh, I really, really like how the how playing the game feels from al- already from the sneaking standpoint because uh, the game actually just makes you feel pretty clever when you play it, and that that really ties into the fact that conventional logic really works quite often in that game. Y- y- you may go uh, into some situation thinking like, I wonder if this th- this will work. And then you do some. You throw, maybe you throw an object somewhere, and uh, you're not really sure if it's going to produce the effect that you have in, in your mind. But then, then you see that it does work, mm-hmm. and that's really great. That that's one of the things that uh, makes me really immersed in the game world, and it it really puts me inside the the, the moment that I'm playing. I, I, yeah, I think. I'm- in- general that series is very (laughs) is very famous for that they put a lot of effort into these little things and i think that really like you know well i mean it's kind of stealth based series from the from the very first games on so but i'm not that familiar with that i should be more familiar so i haven't played them i've only watched them so yeah i've i've played through all of them except for the uh snes games the metal gear games not the solid games but i i've heard they're solid too um, hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, um, you said that con- like conventional, uh, like uh, that uses very much like a logical, um, like the AI reacts in a logical way. But I was thinking, is it actually like something that uh, everyone would feel lo- like logical, or is it sort of like Metal Gear logic? And since, <laughs> since <laughs> at least me and Matthias have been playing through all the games uh, a lot. Uh, our brains are sort of set into this Metal Gear uh, logic, where if I do this, the AI will probably act in this way. Yeah, <clears throat> and then this mm-hmm. is, this is the point where I uh, mentioned the cardboard box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, okay, well, that's good. <laughs> because I mean, if you see, if you always, see a yeah. cardboard box running around, won't you just say, "Huh, what is that box?" <laughs> yeah, of course it has. Yeah, it. Yeah. But it, yeah. yeah. It's completely logical. <laughs> but I think that's... that is one thing that I think uh, that that definitely is like Metal Gear uh, logic. <laughs> but uh, uh, if you've played through the games, you know that uh, the game takes almost everything you do into consideration somehow. Uh, I mean, like guards react differently to different visual things. Mm-hmm. For example, like well, the box is one thing, but uh, also like uh, if you. I think MGS5 even has a, has a mechanic that if you uh, if you put one of those hot girls pictures on oh, the yeah. on the cardboard box and then you sh- uh, <laughs> turn the box some so that the guards see that they will stop and stare at the box or something I don't know I don't mm-hmm. know I haven't tried what happens but you know uh, normally in in some other game where you could do the same thing like I wouldn't expect the guards to uh, like act any differently than if there was no picture of a hot wife over there. <laughs> but but in in MGS, uh, small details like that actually work. And you know like when you the guards don't just immediately shoot everything that isn't part of their own faction, mm-hmm. so to speak. They yep. actually do something. Yeah, I'm sure that this the Metal Gear has it in a very realistic way. You know, if you go to a battlefield in Afghanistan or Iraq and you put up a cardboard box with a hot girl on, the, on in there, like <laughs> on the side, everyone will just be standing around there looking at the girl. Uh, yeah. You can do whatever you want, basically. Yeah, I think it's like, because the games kind of have this like sort of internal consistency 
So yeah, it's not. Uh, so I guess like when you say you go into this Metal Gear mindset, gear mindset or whatever. I mean, I think that happens in games in general. But I think Metal Gear as a series is so well crafted. Uh, and one of the reasons why it's so well crafted is because it's aware of this. So it's sort of like it's aware of the fact that it has created its own internal logic, and it kind of uses it very cleverly. Yeah, I mean, in other games, you can just basically you can be not seen and not heard, or maybe you can have some kind of a stealth uh, stealth boy in Fallout or something like that. But that's it. You can't make the guards do anything anything other than not see you or see you and you know you, you can't shine a flashlight in their faces and then they're stunned from me yeah, so it's, it no, it's not just a binary system or mm -hmm. or like i mean often it's not binary it's usually like they see you or they suspect you are around or they are unaware or something like that there are, there are levels mm -hmm. yeah but i guess metal gear has levels that have nothing to do with your detection specifically mm -hmm. they are just flavor things or things that affect other things and they have Metal Gear games have those like uh, states as well because there's the um, oh what are they called there's alert of course then there's uh, evasion uh, evasion and caution I think is the is another one um, yeah I think I'm not sure it's been a while I have to play them again um, but yeah and within all of those the guards still will act differently to different stimuli in a way. Like, yeah, yeah, even, e even if they're alert, I think if you put up that cardboard box, they just don't shoot it immediately. They will first investigate. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I always like the fact that in the, um, I think it's the first Metal Gear Solid game on the, on the PS One. Uh, the if you if you were in the, in the snow levels, if and you leave like footprints in the snow mm -hmm. they will start following those footprints i was like that really yeah small <laughs> whose detail foot, whose footprints are these yeah. <laughs> they are not mine <laughs> what noise is that what was that noise <laughs> <laughs> yeah though those sound files are forever imprinted on <laughs> in our minds yeah so what other games are there do you have any other great examples I mean, I guess we talked about um, Hitman, for example, last week, mm -hmm. um, in the or or not last week, but in the last podcast, did we? No, that was that was a vlog. By regards, we talked about AI, and I mean, Hitman mm -hmm. is a good example of a stealth game with maybe a little bit more in depth in depth stealth than some other examples. So I guess that that would be that would be one. But I think it's it's also a good example of the genre in the sense that again, their stealth is not purely binary like there is mm -hmm. kind of like these elements of of you know figuring out things and distracting people and like you know for example in the newer games all those opportunities that you get and how you can manipulate the AI to do certain things and stuff like that yeah. that have you guys played uh, any hitman games i yeah. played i played blood money through like way back and i should probably buy the newest one. Oh mm. yes i've never played those i completely missed the series i've played the second one multiple times then i've played the blood money multiple times then i played absolution maybe once and was sort of sad and <laughs> then i played the newest one and i was uh, happy again because it basically blood money taken to the next level okay yeah that sounds really good and for kim more specifically if you want to try them I still recommend starting from Blood Money because yeah. I I don't think that game has aged too much yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's aged really well. Like, of course, graphics are always kind of like you're going to notice this is an old game, but like gameplay wise stuff like that, it's it's really good. Yeah, yeah, and I I also really like the uh, stealth mechanics and how they're done in the Hitman games. Yeah, and like like in Hitman, it's not so much about like crouching and crawling and you know stuff like that it's more like as we all know it's all about like figuring out where to get disguises and and then get to get to areas where you couldn't previously go and then like take out guards and take out your targets in a creative way and that really keeps things fresh for me at least and kind of like this like whole idea of hiding in plain sight and kind of like yeah. again they have this sort of internal logic of for example what uh, this guy is allowed to go where and that you kind of like grow to understand as you go through the games 
and often it's about that like okay I need to get that outfit so that I can get to that area but then I have to take out that guard because otherwise I cannot go there and like it's like a puzzle yeah, yeah. and it's it's like where and when to change uh, disguises and and you know what things you have to do in order to maintain your your uh, stealth or or your your ability to sneak into places and I, I really love the way how the it's basically like these guys dictate and limit where you can go and then the game world still is interactive enough to allow your own creativity to mm-hmm. flow pretty freely and I like how, what what they did in the newest game because it's I think it's always been sort of called social stealth, but in this newest one you can actually go even a bit further because uh, not it's not only about the disguises it's you can also talk to some people and and by talking to them uh, you can make them do certain things that you oh, weren't okay. able to do in the previous ones. And you can also did, were you able to do the blend in stuff in Blood Money? I, for example, I'm not sure if you did. In Absolution, I think you could, and in the newest one, you yeah. could. Like, if you're Absolute, a janitor, yeah. you can, like, mop the floors, or, you know, if you're a scientist, you can mess with some, like, like microscope or something in a laboratory, stuff like oh, that. That's yeah, really I, cool. I think they brought it uh, into the game in Absolution, mm-hmm. and then that carried over to the newest one. You know, that's something I've always wanted in Hitman games. I haven't played the Absolution or, or the latest one, but that's really cool now, because... When I was playing here Blood Money, in many places I was almost wishing that, mm-hmm. like, like maybe I could, if this game actually had the feature, maybe I could write, like, sit down and read a newspaper or something, and you know, uh, that would like increase my odds of not being detected by the enemy guards that walk by or something like that. Yeah. So that's really cool to hear. And I think they did it because that gives another um, sort of layer to the stealth, because now you're able to access certain areas with a disguise that you otherwise wouldn't, because someone will notice you. But you ha- when if you time it correctly, you can dis- uh, sort of blend in to, like, for example, cleaning a floor when that guy, like, walks past you, and then you can continue on your way when they are, like, gone. Yeah, exactly. And it also it gives you this opportunity of, like you know, surveying your surroundings and like planning mm-hmm. a little bit because you cannot be you cannot be detected while you're blending in, right? Like, uh, like yeah, you can't. Yeah. Unless they already had detected you beforehand, of course. But Yeah, but I think then they will not allow, oh oh yeah, if you if your disguise is blown, yeah. then you then they will. Yes. That's true. One thing about Hitman two was the pretty physics. hardcore. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the physics too. <laughs> actually, let's mention that before I say what I had in mind. The physics are actually really awesome. And, uh, you know, in the first level where you walk down the steps into the cellar where it's a mm-hmm. kitchen or something, uh, if a guard follows you um, and steps at the, on, on, the, like, on the top of the stairs at ground level there, you, <laughs> you can, like, crouch and take out the silver ballers and and shoot shoot the guard in the head like a couple of times really fast mm-hmm. and and the guard will fly into the heavens yeah <laughs> and he will like land down from from the sky on the other side of the fence yeah but the weapons <laughs> the, have a ridiculous knockback <laughs> the <laughs> physics of hitman 2 were ridiculous like you could just you you didn't need to hide the bodies you can just shoot them away <laughs> it was yeah. the best. Yeah. It was even better when you get the like uh, slow time cheat, and then you could just load on the guys and then uh, turn off the cheat, and they would just fly away. Wait, is that also on Hitman Two? That was in Hitman One. Yeah, and it's also on Blood Money. What? There, really? Yeah, on PC and oh least, there's God. the cheat menu available. Oh God! Where you can just put on slow motion and be John Wick. <laughs> Okay, I really need to try that because in Hitman One, I had I, I had so many crying laughters with the slow motion button because it's <laughs> you can just kill an enemy and and keep mashing the uh, slow motion button and the physics will go completely <laughs> crazy and and bodies will like stretch and fly all over the like, sky and you can yeah like you said you can hide bodies by doing that it's, yeah. shooting it's shooting them hilarious. to the roof and stuff like this. <laughs> 
but yeah. But what I, what I was going to say originally is that <laughs> is that in Hitman 2 it was actually pretty hardcore that uh, you could not run if your disguise didn't like if if it wasn't appropriate for your disguise. Mm-hmm. That I think that made it really hard. I I, I haven't ever finished the game, yeah. but uh, you know it's <laughs> it did. So you finished it, right? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, at least I got close to the end, yeah. but then I it I may have hit a like a hard spot and then went back to the first levels and shoot bodies to the roof. <laughs> <laughs> but, of course they are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was a long time ago. It was uh, I mean the game was a PC PS2 game, right? Yeah. So yeah. Can't really remember that far anymore. <laughs> Alcohol are, has course, destroyed all, my brain. They are all quite hardcore. Like also Blood Money has its difficult moments. For example, the mm-hmm. very end where you had to like with the oh, slow yeah. time shoot all the dudes and like it's oh, yeah, it's by no means impossible, but it's it is pretty difficult. Mm-hmm. But actually, that uh, that brought to mind uh, when you said that in uh, the second one you couldn't run if the disguise wasn't uh, appropriate. In mm-hmm. the newest one, if you do something weird with your disguise, the the people will start freaking out. For example, <laughs> okay. uh, even if you have like your normal clothes on and you are in a place where you are supposed to be, but you just stay crouched for a while, the guards will start saying like, "Okay, you should really stop that." Um, <laughs> After after a while, they will actually lose their nerves and pull their guns at you and say, "Okay, now now you can stop that." <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if it's a it's sort of like a stealth feature or if it's if it's just an Easter egg sort. Uh, that's very r- rare in games in general to have like AI mm-hmm. respond to whatever weird shit you're doing. Basically, yeah. I really I really love that they did that mm-hmm. because that's that, that that's a good addition to the Hitman like style of gameplay because I, I think in blood money you can uh, do a lot of stuff that visually looks super weird or creepy you can like walk right behind somebody like mm-hmm. like literally touching them you can you can walk behind them and that makes some situations easier if you do yeah. that but yeah. but yeah you can sort of throw them off their um like the route they were gonna take and the timings <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that as well. And I think, but that I think well. that can you can do in the newest one too. Like you can stick really close to people, and they're not gonna come. I'm not sure though. Oh right. But they did still catch some things. But of course, sometimes it's like, especially in the older ones, it gets quite silly. Uh, like for example, in, in Blood Money, I remember a friend even made a video out of it way back in the day. I was playing the White House level. And he like killed a like dude at a little office cubicle thing. And it's like dude slumps over the computer, just you know, dead. And he's standing there, and a guard runs in and goes, "Who did this?" <laughs> and there's like one guy there with a barcode at the back of his head, standing, and a dead guy. It's like, "Who did this?" Yeah, and then you know, more and more hammer. guards start running in, and they're all like walking around and like patrolling the little room. But like mm-hmm. they just simply can't figure it out. So sometimes a little bit misses the mark, but that's part of the charm. But it was the other guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a suicide. He just hit himself with a hammer. Yeah, yeah, like the head. yeah. it was really weird. Yeah, it's it's simple. <laughs> I, I'm the wic- I'm the victim here. But uh, th- those are Hit- Hitman and MGS are uh, nice sneaking mechanics. But uh, at, uh, Kimo, you mentioned earlier another mechanic from Amnesia. Yeah, actually, no. If I, if I may, I, I'll. Because we were talking about the Hitman series, I, I just remember this one game I've really enjoyed watching other people play. I've never had the chance to play it myself. Um, it's called Spy Party. It's it's about this. It's this weird uh, asymmetric multiplayer game when where one one person plays a spy uh, who has like tasks to do mm-hmm. in this uh, cocktail party. Uh, they, I, I can't remember what tasks they are specifically, but he has a list of things to do. And then the other player, um, he uh, he watches the, the whole party from outside and tries to determine which one of the characters in the party is the actual player, the other player. Yeah, I, oh. I've seen this, uh, yeah, I've seen it I too. think, on, in, on Twitch or something, and it yeah. looks really fun. 
uh, it's a one-on-one game, isn't it? Yeah, it's a one-on-one game, and uh, yeah. basically the the idea is that you try to make yourself look like an AI character as much as you can. <laughs> yeah, oh, that is so, so awesome. Oh. Right. Now that you mentioned that, I have mm. to say, like the Assassin's Creed multiplayer was actually really fun. Because in that one, you also you had to sort of fake to be a C, like a computer-controlled character, and then uh. you had to assassinate others. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of a similar idea. Uh, a, a bit, yeah. It was yeah. a bit more competitive though in the Assassin's Creed, which I guess is one reason why it, it uh, didn't see that much players playing it mm. back then. Yeah, but, this, but anyway, this, uh, this going on. <laughs> yeah, this spy party game is something I I really want to try for a long time, but never got to it. So maybe maybe someday. <laughs> we should play that because that idea sounds really fun to me. Yeah, I think I, it's I, on Steam. Yeah. I'm looking at their website. Uh, let's see. I think it is. It says they have a Steam Steam page. So yeah, it is. It is on Steam. All right. I'm looking at their website. When you spro- sc- scroll all the way down, they just have like a price. IGF 2011 grand prize lost to Minecraft. <laughs> That's what that is about. But I guess. Uh, actually, it's it's in Steam, but it's not available. It's in early access, and it says just available soon. Oh yeah, it does. That's true. So it's not actually, hmm. but it seems to be a really old game. It's been there for a while. Yeah, it's yeah. been been there for a while in in development. I don't know if it's still ongoing. You'd think so, and I would hope so. Oh, actually, I think they just came onto Steam uh, last uh, sept- uh, like autumn, and the game has been available from their website so far. They have one yes. recent update here that says yeah. oh, from fifteenth of November uh, last yeah, year. Last yeah. Autumn. So and it says yeah. like uh, they've made the page back then. Yeah. I guess. So maybe it's maybe it's coming. They're figuring out Steam. So maybe we'll get to try through there in. That game actually reminds me of, uh, and here it comes, the mention of Dark Souls within this episode. <laughs> Obligatory. That, we are, that I swear we are not a... sponsored by From Software. <laughs> no, 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 no. Definitely not. Uh, one really hilarious video where somebody uh, somebody gets uh, invaded in Dark Souls 2 and, and the host uh, po- uh, disguises himself as an uh, NPC. Oh yeah, and they they basically kill an uh, an enemy somewhere on the map where where everybody knows that there's a monster right here, and uh, they have previously already uh, gotten all of the armor parts from that particular enemy type so that they can disguise themselves to look pretty much exactly like the <laughs> that so, that enemy, so and then they just course. stand there. <laughs> <laughs> they just stand there, and that and <laughs> the invader. Uh, comes by and you know, kind of looks around like, what the hell's going on? Where, where, where's the host? And they're just standing there, and there's Guile's theme playing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of did something similar way back in the day in Neverwinter Nights in an online server. We like there was this area with dwarves, like the dark dwarves. So we made two churches with my brother that looked exactly like those and used the same weapon stuff like that. And <laughs> but they were of course like maximum level because this was a low level leveling area. And then we would just go and gank low-level players and spam the voice lines that they say and stuff like that. And people were very confused. Like, why are they hitting so hard now? <laughs> and especially because if there's a high-level player in the area, more enemies spawn. So first there's like a ton of these normal Duergar and then like two just pop out of stealth and one shot you. <laughs> yes, it was good times. Yeah. But yeah... But I- yeah I- Kimmo, go ahead. Yeah, I was I was meant to talk about amnesia before, and uh, it's it's of course it's not uh, strictly a stealth game. It's it's a horror game, as as you might know, and uh, but it features these weird um, stealth-like mechanics. And what I always found interesting in that is um, you have the monster that hunts you basically in the levels, and uh, whenever you see the monster. Um, your kind of mental health goes down. It's it's, it's like a it's a meter of your um, it's sanity. like a health. Yeah, it's yeah. it's sanity. It's it's like you have health and sanity, and if if some one of those goes down all the way, it's game over. And all the time you look at the monster, you lose sanity. And it's the same when you sit in the dark, you lose sanity and. Basically, the only way to avoid the monster is to sit in the dark. So I always thought it was, it was an interesting take on this, 
um, where you have to evade someone and then then the evading actually gives you harm. Yeah, so, I think, yeah. I think, yeah. I think uh, they sort of underutilized that system. I think it could have been a bit more complex. Uh, for example, I, I wish... I wish they had done it in a way that um, uh, what was that uh, old game? Uh, something something Sanity's Requiem. Uh, Eternal Darkness. Eternal Darkness. That's the one. Like in that one where you had the sanity meter, and if it went down, it's uh, it's really start fucking with you in a really big yeah. way. But then, of course, that would kind of maybe change the focus of the game a little bit. Like, I, I like the original Amnesia in how, like, contained it is. Like, it doesn't really have any extra stuff. And I think that's how it works, uh, why it works so well. Because hmm. it would kind of, like... I mean, it would be cool if it started doing, like, you know... As, as, as these sanity mechanics often do, like, distorting your view and making you see things that are not really there and stuff like that. But hmm. it would make it a bit different experience. Yeah, if, if Amnesia had a sequel, it would most likely have something it had. more <laughs> yeah, I like oh it. yeah yeah, yeah. don't mention it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but we don't know, talk uh, about that <laughs> the only thing that that kind of annoyed me sometimes about the taking sanity damage while in the dark thing was the fact that when the, there was a like a let's say a corridor with like one lamp overhead of you right now and then at next lamp a few meters ahead and then, then there's shadow in between when you walk through the shadow, you already take a little bit of the damage, or you start to it, it activates the mechanic yeah. of you losing sanity. And I think that it was just a little too sensitive. It it's it, uh, it should have been disabled from like corridors wh where you can d clearly see that there's light light right there, and there's just a half a meter of shadow in between. That was that was a little stupid at some some points. And also, well, the same thing, of course, also happened uh, in some corners of some rooms. And I mean, I get the I get the idea that you have to hide in the shadow where you take sanity damage, and that's really cool. That's that's how the game works. It's great, but it went overboard. I, I, it felt almost like unpolished at some points. Well, I think like it, in regards to that, most certainly because it was an indie game, and you know, it was kind of like the first of its kind in many ways mm -hmm. and maybe even the last of its kind in many ways so i definitely think mm -hmm. that there's some of that in play there yeah, yeah we're true we really should play the penumbra at least the black plague uh part of it sometime together it's a uh, it's great because those great are the, those adventure. are the kind of like prequels to amnesia right uh well all in spirit yeah, yeah, yeah like spirits or like the previous games by the by the same guys yeah, 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 very similar in that that sense, but it more of a science fiction kind of thing. Yeah, and uh, that's that reminds me also of Call of Cthulhu: Dark Corners of the Earth, which had a similar mechanic in that if you look at enemies or or if you look at even things that the game designers deem to be horrifying, like a corpse on the ground, <laughs> you would also lose sanity. Which that, that that ties well into the Lovecraft theme. Yeah. I mean, it would be boring if it was just the enemies in that game. It, but, you it, know, it totally makes going sense. Going back to from uh, software shilling, um, Bloodborne also has that with some enemies. Mm -hmm. that, that oh, okay. Yeah. I, it's a, it's I'm such a noob. Frenzy, I don't know is it? it? Yeah, it's frenzy. Like you get you get so somehow yeah, it's called frenzy. You get frenzy if you look at them, and then if you get too much frenzy, you take a fuck ton of damage, basically. Oh, okay. Hmm. Cool. It's actually relatively common. Well, relatively, well, not really, but I mean, it's it's been used in a bunch of games, and I think it stems from Lovecraft's idea of some things make you mad just by you acknowledging the fact that they exist, so to speak. But yeah. it's a, quite a cool mechanic, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looking forward to actually seeing that in Bloodborne. Now then, we. Uh, also, uh, before I go into the bad games section, <laughs> uh, I know I know you guys want to go there, <laughs> but uh, I have to ask all of you a question. Have you played the Thief: The Dark Project? No, I haven't. I should though. The Dark Project is—is is it the first one? Yeah. Yes or no? I can't remember if it was Thief or Thief <laughs> Two. Okay. Which one I, I played. played? The new one. 
<coughs> we don't. It wasn't very that. good. Uh huh. <laughs> what is the second? Uh, what is the second one called? Can you remember? The Metal Age. Yeah. They're both on Steam, by the way. Yeah. I I played and one of YouTube. those. I can't remember which one, but yes, I've I've played those era of thief games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'll just quickly say about the first thief game. Um, that's. Uh, I, I've only played the first and the second one and the first one is really atmospheric and I think like part of what makes the sneaking and the stealth feel so nice in that game is the, the atmosphere and the sound and the music design everything seems to have this really dark uh, atmosphere in it and, and it's um, somehow it, it make, makes the game work even though the sneaking mechanics are very simple there, are, there are, isn't even any kind of like a cover mechanic, I mean, like you, yes, if you stand in a shadow, you, you, then you won't be, you won't be discovered by guards. But you can't, you can't like press yourself on, onto a wall and and like anyhow utilize that in any mm. any any greater degree. But but there is the thing that you can uh, extinguish torches, and that's like that, that was pretty innovative at the time when it, the game came out. Maybe. And the guards react to that, right? Seven? If you extinguish a torch near them. They don't. <laughs> oh, I thought they do. Yeah, I, no. I, I remember as well that if, if they see like a unlit torch, they will lit it again, light it again. But no, maybe my no, that, that, memory fails me. Maybe that's in some other Thief game. At least the first one they don't. Well, there seems to be a bunch. I just looked from Steam. It's funny, there's Thief TM, which I assume is the original. Then there's Just Thief. Which is the 2014 one. Then there's mm -hmm. Thief Deadly Shadows, which Deadly I think Shadows is. Deadly Shadows is Thief 3. Yeah, I think that's Thief 3, but it doesn't have the number. Thief 2 does. <laughs> like... I think I think that Thief TM is like. It, that's the is original. That the new one. But then. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the original should say the, the Dark Project. It's yeah, the dark Thief project TM the Gold. It's like yeah, a gold, gold is the one. It has the dark project and oh, some yeah, yeah, yeah. So expansion it's, disc. It just doesn't, yeah, have the subtitle in this. Oh yeah, because it's like a bundle that has a bunch of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. It's just funny to look at the search because there's like three different things that are all th called just thief and are all from same z series, but you know, like are separated by several or like close to ten years or whatever. Yeah, the mm -hmm. curse of reboots. Yeah, over but, ten years actually. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. But highly, highly recommended. Uh, if you love like fantasy and y y Thief One, even has some like horror aspects to it. Mm -hmm. So if you like like really dense atmosphere fantasy and sneaking, highly recommend Thief: The Dark Project. The first horror, mission horror. is already less. It's like one of the best in the game. It's really, really great. And I guess if you if you like immersive sims like uh, Deus Ex or uh, Dishonored, I guess though all of those sort of. Uh, own it to the Thief series. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think there are, there's a lot of stuff from the Thief legacy in those games too. So, uh, guys, are you ready? <laughs> uh, I wanted to. Here I really uh, wanted. I wanted to talk about like the Bethesda sneaking. And of course, now and, uh, let's immediately do a quick like uh, mention that we said we would move to the bad game section, and now we are moving to better the games. So the implication is that we're saying <laughs> better the games are bad, uh, not <laughs> universally necessarily, but their stealth mechanics are not the greatest. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's that is our message here. Bad stealth uh, section. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so everybody knows that the stealth mechanics in like. Oblivion, Skyrim, Fallout 3, Fallout 4, they're very rudimentary and not exactly immersive, at least in my opinion. Mm -hmm. What do you guys feel about, like, what, what, what's your top most thoughts on the sneaking? I mean, it's what? it's super gamey and of course everybody knows the meme uh, in New Elder Scrolls games about that, you know, everybody plays a stealth archer. Because it just yeah. and or in your Fallout, you know, stealth sniper guy, pretty much. Well, Fallout's have a little bit more options because they made them FPSs, but so a lot of people just you know shoot at things and play full on FPS mode. But mm -hmm. Elder Scrolls games, especially, it's like because the stealth system is so silly in how they try to like <laughs> RPG it up that kind of like there's this sneakiness <laughs> stat, but basically just makes you like. I don't know, like ethereal, basically. You just are there <laughs> as far as the AI is concerned. You get to a point where you're just 
Like I remember in my first play of Dwarf Skyrim, I played, well, I think I played like a stealth wizard guy, but mostly just it went into stealth anyway, later on the line because it was so broken. Um, but I distinctly remember like sitting like close to dudes and just shooting arrows repeatedly <laughs> and they were just standing there, stuff like that. Maybe yeah, I remember wrong, I'm not sure if it was quite that bad, but at least I know for a fact that you can just like crouch basically yeah. in the middle of a room and they will not yeah. detect you. It's, it's press crouch to vanish. Yeah. <laughs> it's <just> stupid. <laughs> and I think I, they I added if... that as a thing, like... I think in, for example, in Fallout 4, there's like an armor, legendary armor property that makes you actually activate the stealth boy effect when you crouch. Which of oh. course was super <laughs> annoying because whenever you crouched, it activated that, which makes your weapon model uh, invisible and I think also did a full screen effect. So basically you never wanted to use that because most of that game you're gonna be crouched. Mm -hmm. So it's really annoying. Which is another like a good Beth Bethesda design decision, of course. I wonder if, if the whole uh, Skyrim uh, stealth thing is, for example, if it's a lore thing, I wonder if they, in that uh, world they don't feel pain at all. So if you <laughs> shoot someone with an arrow, they just feel like the thump, and then they're like, ooh, what was that? Um, that when they don't find anyone, they don't feel the pain from the arrow, so they just forget about it. Yeah. Like, I can kind yeah. of forgive that in... Uh in Fallout with super mutants because they're kind of mm -hmm. like supposed to be dumb even though I guess uh, you know some of them are not and the lore gets quite confusing but but regardless you know with them I can forgive the whole oh it was probably the wind when you fucking shot them in the head or something but with like <laughs> yeah. actual humans in Skyrim it gets, gets quite uh, or you know like two characters having conversation two bandits or whatever next to a campfire mm -hmm. and you shoot one <laughs> And then the other guy just stands there, like, stops the talking animation, just goes into idle and just stares blankly like, at a wall for a bit, and maybe then reacts. It's yeah. just... And all this feels even, even worse when you come to a uh, Bethesda game after playing something like Metal Gear, where <laughs> yeah. every, anything you do uh, to someone will have some sort of a reaction that will just not just go away. And it's such a weird thing too. I remember thinking back then when I wasn't really like doing game dev at least like as a profession, you know, when Skyrim came out, I came out and I remember those moments when, you know, for example, that specific moment when you shoot a guy and the other guy just watches. I'm like, how hard would it be to just program that they panic? They just throw their hands yeah. in the air and start yelling or and, like running to a direction. Just do that. Like put a behavior. If the AI, you know, notice another character get killed and they don't see the killer, they just panic. Then again, maybe yeah. maybe that was the failure point. Maybe the, AI, the engine cannot handle the, them noticing that the character dies right next to them. That's possible. I don't really. Yeah, know but that. that's you know that's one of those things that you would imagine they got, they got right. I mean, that game came out in two thousand and eleven, mm -hmm. and like still today, I mean, there is it doesn't happen. I mean. What a basic thing. I mean, an enemy gets killed, but the others don't see his body. Like, what? why? Why not? That's that's super, super simple. And I mean, it kind of happens in Fallout 4. Like, they do say stuff like, I'll find whoever did this, which is quite funny when it happens immediately after you kill somebody, for example. Yeah, yeah. But... Or, or, yeah, but afterwards, like, after a few minutes, they would just go back and sit down and... Yeah, like, their, sit down yeah. next to that corpse or even on yeah. top of that corpse. And, yeah, they don't really care. The like funniest thing is if you put on a mod that will um, uh, enable the collision in the ragdolls with the uh, alive characters, they would just kick him out of the way <laughs> and continue walking. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like recently I had this uh, moment in Fallout 4 where uh, I was sneaking inside a, it was a ship and I knew that an enemy was right around the corner. He was sitting in a chair and I was in sneak mode he hadn't seen me before, but he had s said something like, who's there? Uh, he, so he had an idea that he was, uh, he, he had heard me before. But anyway, I walked around the corner and I, I intended to just shoot the enemy right away. And he was there like one meter away from me. And he immediately started getting up from the chair and shouted something like, I'll find you. <laughs> and yeah. And he, so what basically happened is that instead of the enemy like actually seeing me and going into full alert, he, because I was in stealth mode, he basically almost saw me and almost heard me when I was right there in front of his face. And 
then I already had the time to shoot him. And I bet that after, if he just had had a little bit more time, he would have next just shouted something more aggressive and started attack attacking me. But what baffled me about that was that that wasn't his first reaction, because that's pretty immersive, immersion breaking if you start to think about it. And that's a, that's a case, that's a, like a corner case, and variations of that keep happening all the time in, in Fallout. But I think and, that's kind of like the, <clears throat> that's because of the tried and true Bethesda method of everything is a single variable with like no dimensionality to it. Like yeah. how detected you are is just basically a number that has you know certain states at certain values and it cannot just jump from value to value necessarily it will like you know go through all the states i mean they do the same stuff with their quests for example stuff like that it's like very it's very reminiscent of like really old code you know that would be like you know line whatever do something go to this line like that's how better yeah. this question basically everything seems to work i mean i'm no expert but but that seems to be yeah, generally but... generally the way the way how these things work, and you know, and especially combined with how weird their whole animation system seems to be, and how weird the things react, then stuff like that happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I understand that. I mean, that sounds reasonable. That's that's probably how it is, uh, and I understand that the games are massive in size and scope, but it still it still feels a little jarring. When you when we have games where the AI reacts to your sneaking in a much more interactive, in a much more intelligent way, so, so then we have these like triple A massive games that should have all the bells and whistles of a modern game, but they miss out on these stupid simple things like not reacting to corpses properly not that's of course the, not panicking nothing yeah because i think that's of course because you're supposed to be able to play them in so many different ways but why is skyrim is so magical in that regard in a way even though i i think it's the most popular bethesda game so it also got all of stuff right but why it's so funny in its wonkiness so to speak is because it's so easy to figure out that you know the stealth archery is the most optimal or like under certain circumstances anyway the most optimal way to play so why didn't they then because it's so it becomes so obvious why didn't they optimize that then more because of course like yeah. you can't play just you know run at people with your sword or or do a wizard character or whatever and none of these systems necessarily come into play and i think that's part of it is that you know they don't want to put too much effort into a system that might not affect most of their players for example Mm -hmm. yeah. For example, those systems might, those reaction systems might work completely fine if you're just running and gunning in Fallout, for example. But when you are really sneaking around and observing the enemies and stuff like that, of course, everything falls apart. Yeah, most likely. It makes sense. So that was our episode this time. Thanks for listening, and uh, we will see slash hear you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, bye.